is Johnny the Artist, and um, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama, on this plane. And um, I'm an interdisciplinary artist. And my work fits this show at the Kentuck Art Center entitled Good Trouble, because that's, in essence, what it's all about. It's about, uh, uh, as one person said, disturbing the comfortable and comforting the disturbed. I brought four pieces. They're, they're very different in, in scope, but they're the same in, in terms of intent. Um, the piece, E Pluribus Unum, which we found in our American currency, is um, also entitled as a subtitle, Out of Many One, because that's actually what it means. It's a very figurative piece, very literal. You have a young woman uh, coming forward, sort of elevated, uh, with nothing in her hand, symbolizing the possibilities behind her you have um, a mandala of hands uh, and clenched fists, uh, symbolizing a sense of solidarity coming out of diversity. And truly, I believe that that's the only way we're gonna truly move forward in terms of, of overall progress. The second piece is a larger piece and it's done using mixed media, uh, found objects, and it's toward a more perfect union. I utilize the acrylic paint, I use nails, copper wire, and each piece is very symbolic and it's about balance. Um, and I really enjoy these types of works because they make me aware of, of everyday things. I pass by a rusty nail on the street, a bottle cap, and how I can use that in my art to, uh, to speak the language that I want to deliver. The other piece, Beyond the Glass Darkly, uh, once again, I use wood, uh, found locally, uh, had the frames built and everything. And the imagery actually speaks about um, the Black Panther Party is a little bit of that in there. It has reference to that one. And then I also incorporate the overall silhouette of the dark figure, which comes, um, brings me closer to what I'm working on now. So I wanted to bring all that into, into this particular show because the idea of, of good trouble, I want to be well-rounded. And then the final piece is called um, As Above, So Below. And it's close to where I'm working with now because my work is very figurative. I would work on work out the images and, and the face, and I think people got caught up in in the imagery. So I wanted to present something that was more of an idea, uh, more so than just the uh, focus on how well I could paint or sculpt a face. So I started flattening out the images and using the gold line. And usually it's, it's one gold line that goes throughout the piece, and that's uh, it's symbolic that we come to this plane uh, with a single path that goes in many different directions, but it's still one path. And although our paths may not have been particularly chosen by us, it was an imposed one, that path also leads toward a future, one of our own choosing. So it's uh, like a gold coated map, so to speak. The earliest Remembrance I have of creating something was um, we were living in a neighborhood called Terry Heights. I was about three or four years old and uh, I drew on the wall. And uh, I remember vaguely what happened. I don't know if I actually got, you know, I got my butt tapped or not, but I remember being put in a corner. And I sat in the corner, in this corner, and there were, there were two walls coming out from the corner. They were white. You know, all our wall, um, walls in the house were white. And I don't know if I still had the crayon in my pocket or if I found another one, but I drew again because I was there, this wall was there, and I drew again. Of course, I got in trouble again, but there was something very satisfying about making a mark on this space. And in my mind, in my, my elementary mind, I could not see why this space uh, should not bear my mark. And I was always drawing on things after that. It, even if it was picking up a piece of limestone or a rock and writing on the sidewalk, I just loved doing it. Something about leaving that mark. Maybe that's my uh, stretch toward immortality. The first thing I remember about anything to do with civil rights was actually second grade. Rolling Hills Elementary School, we had, um, I guess it must have been February, that's the only time we focused on that in school. Um, I got a chance to realize, oh, I'm black. From February 1st through uh, uh, February 28th, 29th, it was uh, one of those years. And then I wake up on March 1st and I'm still black. But 
I remember sitting in class, we talked about Martin Luther King, and the way she explained it, how it, how it um, formed itself in my second grade mind. She, she said that there was a man who believed in love, who promoted love, and somebody who didn't have that love killed him. And in my mind, I saw this guy run down the alleyway, knocking on people's doors, trying to tell them about how important it was to love, and somebody shot him in the alley. That was my vision, because that's all the information I was given as a little black child about Dr. Martin Luther King. And then we had to draw images of him on those uh, round paper plates with the little scallop edges on them. Um, we had to draw Martin Luther King on those, and then she put them on the wall. And I remember sitting there, and she was talking about the pieces, and then she stopped at mine and was telling me how good it was. And I'm looking at it and looking at, at everybody else's, I'm thinking, man, mine really is good. And I remember every so often I would just look, be distracted from class and just stare at that image of Martin Luther King looking down at me, something I had done. And that's, if you want to say that's a part of the civil rights movement, that's my first introduction to um, uh, what we call the civil rights movement was doing that image of Martin Luther King. Being a black artist in the South, I'm saddled with a, a, a history, a uh, pretty binary history. You know, the beauty of the South, you know, from the trees to the smell of magnolia, honeysuckle and uh, sassafras, all those wonderful things. And then that, that those things are juxtaposed by a song like Strange Fruit. And, and constant reminders that I'm still in the South. You know, like our court on our courthouse square, the Confederate soldier stood there for generation after generation. And I grew up all my life seeing it, but not giving it any real thought until, you know, I got older. Now it was actually removed this past summer or this past fall, but for so many years, it stood there as a reminder. Now, in that direction, I'm not one of those people who will say, get rid of all those monuments, because that's like whitewashing the history. No, it's real, but you have to mend those things. If you're gonna have that there, also put the other side there add more of the truth in, don't, don't cover up the truth. When you add more of the truth, so you balance that thing out. I see my work as important, um, first of all, to myself. It's, uh, it, it's, it's my plug into, into history. And in that, in looking at my work as a fight for justice, understanding that for me, justice means that which I want for me, security, peace, anything that I'm, those things I may uh, name, what I want for me, I also want for you. And, and that's justice. You know, we, we can issue a type of justice where we can say, well, you know, everybody has the right to do this, right to do this, or do this or that. But that becomes more of a, um, uh, something you can put on paper. But I'm talking about the type of justice where I can look you in your eyes and I can see your humanity. And your humanity becomes just as important as my humanity. And I can respect the humanity in you because I respect the humanity in myself. So that's justice. And in my, in my work, the way I put that forward is by reflecting myself in my work, all right? For example, as an artist, people ask me questions like, well, do you ever paint white people? And I asked the question, I wonder if anybody would ask Picasso that, or Van Gogh, or any of these people who only painted images, or what, so my favorite artist, Gustav Klimt, you don't, I don't see any, any images of, of anybody of color. But that doesn't keep me from liking his work. You know, Peter Paul Rubens, these are, these are artists that I look up to and who, whose work I love. But I'm not looking for them to necessarily reflect me. I see me reflected in their work because of my being an artist and because I can appreciate what they do. So in working to create that balance, in creating work so that when, when my children walk into a museum or my grand, grandchildren or great-grandchildren walk into a museum years from now, they can look up on those walls and they can see something that looks like them. They can see themselves as a part of the historical narrative and not as, as a subcategory of, of black art or this art. No, I'm right there with the artists in America, the artists in Europe, because I'm no different. I built this thing from the bottom up just like everybody else. So in that vein, yes, it's, it's, it's a direct connection uh, to, to that whole idea of, 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 of civil rights, uh, of being in that place of bring about, I don't want to use the word equality because that almost equates to somebody else to actually hire. Um, I think it's a matter of, of, a matter of justice, being just.